Um, so our first speaker today is Lucy Hall, who is a, a PhD student based at Lincoln, and uh, she has been doing some work in a research partnership with Dairy NZ. And uh, she's looking at, and this is in Lucy's words, uh, the effect of milking frequency on milk production, animal behaviour and farmer sleep. Now it's my turn. Right. <laughs> oh, and those aren't my slides. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. Um, so, yeah, good morning. Hopefully everyone's caffeine hasn't worn off from this morning. Um, my name is Lucy. I am currently a PhD student at Lincoln University and in partnership with DairyNZ. So um, firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge my supervisors, um, Rachel Bryant at Lincoln and Paul Edwards at DairyNZ. Mm. So, oh, uh, what am I talking about today? Uh, changes to cow behaviour when transitioning from a twice a day milking schedule to three in two. Mm. So. Um, what am I talking about, just so we're all on the same page before I get started? Um, when I refer to three in two milking, I'm referring to milking three times in two days. So that's twice on day one and once on day two, and then the pattern repeats. Two milkings, one milking, two milkings, one milking. You may have heard this um, called 16 hours by um, some farmers, but we're trying to move away from that trend because it's not true 16 hours. Um, these cows are actually milked on a 12-18-18 split. Mm. Um, so, we are seeing an increasing number of farms start to use 3 and 2 milking in New Zealand. Um, for people, um, 3 and 2 compared to twice a day can mean less milking time, um, which can leave, lead to a better lifestyle, maybe dependent on how much you enjoy milking. Um, and reduce shed costs, less lo loss and less loss milk income compared to once a day. For cows, um, less walking, less yard time and less milking time, um, which translates to more time in the paddock. Mm. So we know that cows prioritise certain behaviours, for example, lying time over social behaviour. So my question was this. Um, what do cows get up to with this extra time in the paddock when they are milked three and two compared to twice a day? This um, was a small chunk of data which was part of a much wider um, study at LURDF, uh, Lincoln University uh, Research Dairy Farm, um, and was funded under SFF. Um, the herd was established from calving and we used 29 cows, nine of which were first calving heifers and 20 were um, mixed age. Mm. Um, they were on a twice a day milking schedule from calving, um, so 6 a.m., 4 p.m. And then on the 1st of December, they were trans transitioned to three and two. So as I mentioned before, a 12 hour, 18 hour, 18 hour split, um, which looked at like 5 a.m., 5 p.m and 11, 11 a.m. the next day. Uh, they were just stocked uh, regular Canterbury dairy farm, um, 3.5 per hectare, um, and a new allocation was given um, after each milking, so um, this changed with their grazing, uh, their milking frequency. So all cows were fitted with a cow manager tag, so you can see um, in the right-hand ear of this girl, that's what they look like if you haven't um, haven't used them before, so a cow manager tag will spit out data in minutes per hour in five different um, behaviour categories. So these are um, defined by the cow manager tag itself. So for example, um, for this cow, she, we'll get a data set which says between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. she spent 20 minutes grazing, 20 minutes active, uh, 20 minutes ruminating, What's that add up to? That's a whole hour. Um, and then we also have a high active category, which is related um, to estrus activity. Um, and then the not active category, which hopefully um, explains itself. So these categories don't overlap. Um, they're just given in minutes per hour. Um, cool. Right. Um, so I guess what did, what did we find out? So this is a total minutes um, per day by activity type. Mm. So firstly, um, to start off with, we have active. So um, 
a, it's got a star by the bottom um, that denotes a statistically significant result. So p was less than 0 0.5. Um, if you like p-values, um, the paper's online, so you can look those up. <laughs> um, so we did find a difference in active. Um, so the darker green denotes twice a day, and the lighter green is three and two. So we actually found an increase in activity when cows were milked three and two, so when they had more time in the paddock. Um, why this may, might be, I wish cows could talk, it would make my lot, job a lot easier, um, but potentially more feed searching um, behaviour, so they had a larger break um, per, de, um, per allocation, so it went from being four, four breaks over 48 hours um, with twice a day to three breaks over, 20, uh, over 48 hours, so they were getting a larger area, so maybe they spent more time um, trying to get the best bit of grass. Um, alternatively, we know that they prioritise certain behaviours, so with more time in paddock, were they spending more time socialising with their friends because they had the ability to do so? A um, couple of hypotheses. Um, in terms of not active time, so this was not... Um, significant between the groups, um, which overall I think is, is a really good outcome. It means that our cows are not coming um, with the higher milk, milking frequency of twice a day, um, are not fatigued, um, they're not coming with that extra paddock time, spending more time sitting down because they can. Um, yeah, it's exactly the same. Uh, in terms of eating, um, eating time actually declined um, between twice a day and three and two, um, potentially because um, their, their milk production did decrease slightly, um, and this aligns with another study um, that has previ previously been done. Uh, in terms of ruminating time, kind of follows the same pattern as eating time, which is uh, usually what we see. Um, and then high active is estrus. So, um, yeah, it's good that we didn't see, see any differences there. So um, we then broke down uh, the minutes per hour and just made it um, daylight or dark. So I guess to see where these changes occur. So again, I've gone with the, the star notation of um, what is a statistically significant result. So um, in terms of... Daylight down here, um, active, which is the green, um, was was different between um, twice, a, so we've got twice a day and then three and two down the bottom. So we did see an increase in their activity during the day um, with three and two. And then this yellow here is eating time. So we also saw, um, I'm looking at it from an, a weird angle. <laughs> Um, actually a decrease in eating time during daylight hours. Um, and then in terms of the when things changed in the dark, um, everything but high active um, changed slightly between a twice a day and a three and two milking interval. Um, our hypothesis being that um, they are milked later on a three and two, so the way we structured the three and two milking intervals, um, they were milked at 5 p.m. on the first day so um, potentially this is shifting some of their behaviour, especially that, um, that eating bout that they like to do um, in later afternoon, um, more into, into, dark, into the dark hours rather than um, earlier on in the day. <coughs> Right, um, so to sum up, um, cows spend the extra time in the paddock um, when they are milked three and two instead of twice a day being active. Um, they decrease their eating time during the daylight and increase their grazing time um, during the dark. So like I said, potentially due to the time that they are milked. Uh, we saw a rumination decrease um, during the hours of darkness, which is slightly unusual, we would probably expect it to um, follow the trend of eating. Um, but this is a novel study, so there's pretty limited information out there um, comparing milking intervals to animal behaviour, and none comparing um, uh, which use a three and two milking intervals. So um, yeah, we're, we welcome um, more, more investigation. Cool. So I believe, I need to stay on that, there we go.
Um, thank you very much for your attention. And I believe questions come at the end. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Mm.